Um, let's talk about acquisitions. Okay. I have this $5 million company. I really don't, but I have this $5 million company. Hypothetically. Hypothetically. And, um, and I think we've alluded to this stuff before, but this is maybe now more than ever if you want to grow your company. Um, look very closely to acquisitions. And, and Rick, I know you do it. You, you, you do a, a lot of that. Uh, but is a $5 million company a little too small? No, you, uh, it's not too small to acquire somebody. Um, uh, you, you, you probably aren't going to be acquiring a $50 million company. Correct, yes. Unless you have a lot of cash yes. that we don't know. We yes. buy a company that was doing anywhere from half a million to two and a half million in sales. Whoa, okay. That's and, significant. And, 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 uh, and, and use that as a way to grow your business. And so let's say you bought a $2 million business. You know, there's a 40% increase in your sales. Whoa, yes, that is. Um, the key uh, to making a, a, a successful acquisition work is that you um, you need to make sure that you have, first of all, a well-thought-out plan of how you're going to integrate these two businesses together. Um, you know, am I going to, uh, you know, keep, uh, keep the... Uh, all the people in place, yes. or am I going to eliminate some, yes. or what am I going to do, which customers am I going to go after. A, so. You have to have a good plan. You have to have a good plan, that's correct, and so you want to map out your plan, and then you need to look at the next thing, which is financing. Yes. <laughs> and, it always and, comes up, doesn't it? It always comes up. People yes. need that darn money, yes. you know? <laughs> um, and uh, on the financing front, um, you know, as we alluded to earlier in the program today, financing is difficult, but not impossible to get. Um, if you have a well thought out financing plan with with the uh, proper amount of collateral and cash flow to uh, to make that work, um, you you can you can get a uh, you, you you can get financing. Gross profit margins are one number that you look at, but the the big number that the banks look at is a is a number called EBITDA. Yes. And this isn't Porky Pig talking. <laughs> EBITDA, EBITDA, EBITDA. That's all, folks. <laughs> uh, EBITDA is earnings before interest taxes, depreciation, and amortization. And uh, bankers like to call it your cash flow, which it's the money that's available really to pay your principal and interest and uh, things like this. So uh, the bankers want to see that you have enough EBITDA to cover your principal and interest payments on your loans. And if you have a, a good coverage there, that's the first thing that they look at. Um, they also look at your collateral. In today's banking environment, it is very difficult to borrow money that's not fully collateralized. So what does that mean? You might have equipment, um, and they would take the... the uh, yeah, put a lien on the equipment. Not they, a lien. Lien isn't the right word, is it? They're, 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 they're going to look at the equipment. They're going to ask you to, to uh, get it valued. So okay. the, the, the equipment's not going to be a fair market value appraisal. It's going to be what's called an orderly liquidation value appraisal. So an orderly liquidation is if, if the bank had 90 days to to uh, sell off all your equipment, how much money would they get? And then they're going to lend you a percentage of that. It might be, you know, 80% of the orderly liquidation value. So let's say you have some equipment that's worth a million bucks. They could theoretically lend you $800,000 okay. on that equipment. I got gotcha. you. They'll look at, at accounts receivable. They'll lend you maybe 75 to 85% of your eligible accounts receivable. And you say, well, what the heck is eligible accounts receivable? Well, you, you don't count any receivables that are over 90 days. Mm -hmm. You don't count any receivables that, that are uh, maybe foreign to foreign uh, companies. You don't count any receivables that are uh, where you have an offsetting payable to a vendor, uh, things like this. And so there, there, there's, a, there's a little calculation that the banks make you do. They'll let you borrow anywhere from you know, maybe 25 to 60 percent of your inventory. Uh, at cost. The big area that, that, uh, that, that we look at is, in addition to the plan and the financing is what are the strategic uh, synergies that might be out there? Um, you know, synergies between the two companies. Between the how, two companies. How would they mesh together? How are they going to mesh together? How, you know, what, what, what competitive advantages are going to be? If you're making a certain surgical instrument, let's say, and you want to buy my company and we're the only two manufacturers of those surgical instruments, we might have a real competitive advantage now that if we go to the marketplace and we're all un uh, under one brand and, you know, gotcha. instead of us beating each other up, we work together yes. and we can we can really uh, uh, take things a lot farther. That could be a, a, a synergy that could be out there. And then finally, there's the cultural uh, things that need to be looked at. 
will the people in company A get along with the people in company B? Um, and that's a hard one sometimes, and it takes a lot of leadership um, to pull that off.